Hi, this is my first video and I'm not really good at talking <laughs> and expressing myself, but I really want to make a video that's educational and there's so many great videos out there and I just, and I just wish that there were people who do not know these type of subjects be able to see these type of subjects. So I'm hoping to branch out the channel into doing that to making so that people can see things that they probably wouldn't know otherwise. So I hope that this video will be educational and I hope that my two cents would also help in any type of way. Thank you for watching. The Bible is clear. In the end times leading to the Antichrist, there will be false prophets. And one of the ways that the enemy deceives people is through false prophets and also under the guise of entertainment masquerading as Christianity. In this video, we're going to take a look at the criteria the Bible gives us for false prophets. And we're going to compare it to the chosen Dallas Jenkins and his wife and the Mormon executive producer of The Chosen. Ooh, wow. We're going to compare what they said, God said, to what the Bible says is the measure of a false prophet. My guest today, who you've seen before, our brother in Christ, Shane Cox, who runs a group on Facebook called The Chosen Do Not Be Deceived. All right, I'm glad to be back on, Doreen. In 2 Peter 2, we see a warning that false prophets are motivated by greed. I mean, really, what do you want to see as a result of the chosen going forth and going around the world? Yeah, our stated goal. Apollos watered. Apollos. No way. Yes way. <laughs> is Apollo has been recognized as a god of art, archery, music, and dance. Music. Ooh. <laughs> Because don't they say the devil is the god of music? Yeah, Apollo means somebody who destroys. One who destroys. Destroyer. And what does the devil do? He's a destroyer. So. It looks like Apollo. When I saw the word Apollo, I automatically thought of Apollyon. Which is another name for the devil. And... I wonder if those two are the same, and I think it might be. Apollyon, or as it is, like, it, as it is literally in the King James Version of the Bible, um, in Revelation 9-11, a destroyer is the redeem, redeeming of the Hebrew word abandoned. The angel of the bottomless pit. I do think that those two are the same, but Apollo Waters probably going is probably named after the person of God Apollo. But you know how wicked everything is in life, it probably does have to do what Apollo the Asian God. Yeah. It's something to look at, point out. Apollo's identification as the sun god is universal among later writers. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the sun god, who else is the sun worship? The devil, right? Mm, let's go back to the video. Yeah, our stated goal is we want to reach a billion people with the authentic Jesus around the world. Okay. His goal is to reach a billion people with the authentic Jesus. And of course, it's not the authentic Jesus. Even Dallas Jenkins has admitted that it's only... Uh, what, 5% biblical, and even that is twisted. The authentic Jesus is found in the Gospels, in the Bible, and this is not the authentic Jesus at all. This is a, um, a, a poor representation of our Lord and Savior. This is, this is the false Jesus I followed. He's this 
feel good, easy going, buddy, buddy. And he, he can't save because he's not sinless. He's not, he's not perfect the way he's being portrayed here. Why would God give someone a message that contradicts scripture to make a TV show that contradicts scripture? Trade here. I want to read this. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. This goes hand in hand to how you don't go to different spirits who speak a different gospel. Goes hand in hand with all these different types of religions out there that came after Christianity, that came after Jesus, that speaks of a different gospel, of an angel coming to them and speaking something different, what the Bible already says. The Bible already warns you, don't don't listen to any different spirit. It doesn't matter if they say they come from God. Don't listen. And people don't realize that. They just want to do what they want to do. What they want to believe in what they want to believe in. Rather believe in what is true. No, they want to believe in this, this like she said, in this feel good, all good God. But God is good, but he is also a jealous God. You know, he's he has anger. He's upset. You know, look at the world. He has reasons. He's his upsetness, his anger is justified. Why would God give someone a message that contradicts scripture to make a TV show that contradicts scripture about a false Christ? The answer, he didn't. The Bible is very clear about false prophets. Jeremiah 14, 14 said that false prophets prophesy delusions of their own minds, not from God. So mm. let's, let's uh, turn to the first clip that you found about how he got inspired to do the show. Um, before he was doing research, so he went to Magdala um, and he um, got some research there. And this is um, basically where he heard from God. He says, this shows success. I need to step out of the way. But what's happening with this show, the feeding of the 5,000, the breaking down of cultural barriers, the breaking down of religious barriers, the breaking down of age barriers, the fact that so many people are coming together. There's a reason I have barriers, because not all religions are of Christ. Okay? It's nice to even get along or whatever, but we, we can't tolerate everything. All he's talking about is what the devil wants. That's really what he's promoting with this show. All I can tell you is that I've been really trying to listen what I'm writing and really trying my best to make sure that this show is focused solely on the stories of Jesus and not bring my own biases to it. You did. And that's what I think he's <laughs> responsible for because this show is way better than I am and the effect that it's having on people is way better than anything I could ever do. There's no amount of success this show could have that it would ever lead me to believe that I'm responsible for it. So God is doing something special. When people watch it, they sit, they tend to say the same thing. They say, I can't explain it, but my heart was just like wrecked, but in the best way possible. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I, that's not me. That's not Dallas Jenkins. I didn't write something going, what I really want to do is make sure that anyone who watches this, their heart is, is broken down by the Holy Spirit. I'm not responsible for that. So what I really want to do is make sure that anyone who watches this, their heart is, is broken down by the Holy Spirit. I'm not responsible for that. So um, all I know is I'm going to continue to do my best to listen. And I think if I continue to do that, I'm sorry. Then what's the, what I really want to do is make sure that anyone who watches this, their heart is, is broken down by the Holy Spirit. I'm not responsible for that. So um, all I know is I'm going to continue to do my best to listen. And his if, heart is broken by the Holy Spirit. You're not responsible for the Holy Spirit breaking your heart. What? I continue to do that. And what's been happening so far in season one where God has been kind of connecting what he wants said to what the viewers are experiencing. And I'm just... F, F. This is why you got to look up these people and watch what they're saying. What is he talking about? He automatically sound so unbiblical in the world. Trying to kind of be a, a helpful conduit in that. I think that will continue to happen as long as I continue to try to stay out of the way. So what's up with that language, Dorian? What? 
Yeah, that was pure new new age languaging. And that was so similar to my past as someone who would trance channel and listen. I thought that I was taking dictation from God. Oh, so many times people come up to me in person and, you know, greet me in an airport or something and start crying and thanking me for a particular scene. And I'm like, I remember that scene when it was downloaded. And so the way Dallas is speaking, Shane, reminds me so much of my past where I had that ambitiousness that he does. He just triggers me when he talks that way, not only because it reminds me of my sinful past, but because uh, I'm so concerned for his audience. We, we know Satan masquerades as an angel of light, and we know that in 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen, it says that Satan's servants can appear to be servants of righteousness, mm -hmm. but they are servants of Satan. And that's what I was before I was saved. So that's why you can't believe everybody who said they are a Christian, that they follow Jesus Christ, because even the devil believes. The devil knows. He doesn't need to believe. He knows. He's there. He's there. I mean, you can't be trusting people out here. <laughs> One of the things that Sarah Young said is her method, which reminds me of Dallas Jenkins, for writing yeah, be uh, Jesus Calling. And of course, we she's passed now, but she, she wrote that I decided to listen, and she put that in quotes, with pen in hand, writing down whatever I heard in my mind. This is how I was listening to him, by focusing on Jesus and his word while asking him to guide my thoughts. So... This is, this is a channel book, uh, Jesus Calling. And then she put little scripture notes at the bottom. This mm -hmm. is what people would I argue with I have that book, me. but I never read it. <laughs> now I know not. I don't need to read it. Because it says, well, here, Hebrews 12, 2, Psalm 102, 27. But it doesn't have that actual scripture. It just has the chapter right. and verse numbers. But if someone were to open that up, and compare it to what she wrote, you'd see the contradiction. But it makes people feel safe, is my point. And they think it's a Christian book when it's yeah. not. Um, I have, uh, I'll put a link in the description below of 10 reasons why people should not be reading Jesus Calling. It's a very serious Trojan horse bringing in deception into the church. Mm. Wow, that's a, really, that's a really interesting quote. And also you can hear the ecumenical kind of talk like, you know, breaking through faith traditions and all that, it's yeah, on steroids. And, you know, we've talked about just all the angles of how the chosen, you know, they have the Mormon connection, you know, Catholic connection, they have New Age connection, you know, evangelical, if you want to call it that. Um, we just charismatic. It, you got everything. Islam, I think, is like the only thing missing from that huge ecumenical movement. It, it's and again, it reminds me of my new age background. Uh, it was a very ecumenical, as many of the progressive so-called Christians are, like your Rick Warren and and such, always saying, you know, everyone gets along. R Richard Rohr is another one who says that Christianity can learn a lot from Buddhism, and so no surprise when I look back on my new age channeling, where I was doing the same thing Dallas just talked about, listening. I dug through for this episode, and it was painful, my old channelings. And so I'm going to show this, and this is heretical, this is blasphemous, but it just shows the false Jesus I was channeling also. Look at this. This is what I, th I said, and I thought that Jesus said to me, I am not constrained to one form of religion or belief because I belong to all who love me. Now, that sounds so beautiful and lovely um, in philosophy, but it is a philosophy because Jesus in truth said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's John 14, 6. And he talked about the narrow path, the narrow gate. Like Dallas Jenkins, I really thought that I was getting messages from God, from God's angels, mm -hmm. and from Jesus Christ himself. And I wrote these messages, and I had worldly success like, Dallas Jenkins and The Chosen, big success. Like, I didn't even understand how it was logical, how much it took off. And people were crying and telling me that my false God channeling was comforting them and mm -hmm. making them feel closer to God. But how could it? Because it wasn't God. It wasn't from God. I didn't know that at the time. I sincerely thought, like maybe Dallas Jenkins sincerely thinks, I sincerely thought 
that I was getting messages from God and God's angels. Man, I saw this video of this woman who used to follow Doreen, like big fan of Doreen, and she was all like, ever since her husband came in the picture, she's been acting different. I don't know what's going on with her. And that's crazy. Like, she, it's not like she followed Doreen and was like, well, I'm going to follow your path too. I see what you're doing. She was like, ever since she acts different, I'm not following you no more. You become this religious person. She found truth. That's all what it is. She found truth. It was just, that video was just so insane to me. It was just crazy. But make no mistake, God is not pleased with false prophets like I used to be. False oh, one thing we also have to remember is that even false prophets can, can tell you a prophecy that comes true. I know some people think that you can tell if a prophecy is true if it comes if it comes true um, if it really comes from God if I said that so wrong so people think that they know that a prophecy came from God if it comes true but a prophecy can also come from a devil a demon and still come true that's why you have to read your body read your word read what god said if your dream if your prophecy whatever it is say something different from what god said then that's how you know it's not from god if there arose among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth you a sign or a wonder and the sign of the wonder come to pass Whereof he spoke unto you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you had not known, and let us serve them. You shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proves you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. This is the part where it gets confusing and difficult because there are a lot of people who claim that they got things, dreams, and wonders, prophecies from God. And you don't really notice that they're moving you away from God because they're saying Jesus. They're talking about the Bible. They give a new verses. But they're moving you to a different Jesus. You have to actually understand who Jesus Christ is. You have to know his character to understand the difference between a fake Jesus Christ and a real Jesus Christ. If you're not reading your Bible and you just go to church and just listen to what your pastor says, then you're not going to get the truth. That's, that's just what it is. To be. False prophets claim to presumptuously receive a word from God, and then the false prophet points to themselves, points to their success does not point to repentance. That's how we know this is a false prophet. In Psalm 73, we can see that God's judgment sometimes comes in the form of worldly success. This can create spiritual blindness so that the person cannot see that they are sinning against God, that they're being rebellious. We also know from Romans 1 that God often judges rebellious people by giving them over to their depraved minds, giving them over to wallow in their sins. Another deeply concerning characteristic of a false teacher or a false prophet is that they lie. They contradict themselves. They're dishonest. They cover their tracks. See what you think about this next clip. This is a disturbing clip that shows Dallas Jenkins on a Mormon podcast. One of the, the doctrines the teachings out there is that we are saved through faith through works and that kind of do contradict it yes we should have repentance change our ways in our lives even if you're not a christian don't follow jesus christ that's the way you're supposed to be you should care about yourself, care about your well-being. People don't care about themselves. They just blindly follow the world. 
and not realizing that they're not doing what they need to improve themselves even though they're saying that it's all me 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 but they're not really doing for themselves you know um in a positive way at least but as followers of christ we should have repentance we should change our mind towards sin but a lot of people think that we order to be saved we need work and that's a contradiction because the bible says that we are saved through faith and faith alone so adding works in there contradicts to what the scripture what the gospel is i can understand how it can get a little confusing because we expect for us to be good in some type of way and that's really where repentance come in but we have to remember as sinners we don't become fully 100% good. Not only good, 100% good, it was and is Jesus Christ. Um, I don't really think people understand that there's a difference between God's law, God's way, God's goodness compared to human's way, human's thoughts, our understanding of good and bad. Because we think that we have to be perfect. We should, but we can't because we're not God. And we never will be. That's why we are saved through grace. Not through works, but through grace. Grace alone is saved through the blood of Christ. So I just wanted to put that in there because I know a lot of people don't understand we see the contradiction in their own doctrine, and doctrine is very important. Your way, um, the teachings, things that you believe, it's, it's important. It's really life or death. It's like a life or death situation. <laughs> because a lot of people think they're saved, but they're not, because they don't have their faith in Jesus Christ. They have faith in what they did, what they're doing, but they don't have faith in what Jesus did, what Jesus is already doing. Pray and just have faith that God answered it and that God hears you. That's all. We know that The Chosen is partially financed by members of the Mormon Church. And Dallas Jenkins, in this interview, says to the Mormon podcaster that evangelicals, Christians, love the same Jesus as the Mormons do. Now, that's impossible because the Mormons believe a completely different Jesus than Christians do. I mean, just one example, Mormons believe that Jesus is Lucifer's brother. That should be enough, but there's a lot more. But the point is that Dallas is saying to his his financier audience that i can honestly understand how stuff i can come to that kind of conclusion but we know it's not true of the mormons that we love the same jesus and then look at this in the next clip that dallas denies saying that he said he never said that and beautiful things about this project have been my growing brother and sisterhood with people of the LDS community that I never would have known otherwise and learning so much about um, about your your faith tradition um, and realizing, gosh, for all the stuff that maybe we don't see eye to eye on, that all happened, that's all based on stuff that happened after Jesus was here. Um, the stories of Jesus we do agree on and we we love the same jesus um that's not something that you often hear sometimes it's like oh you uh, they that's believe in a different yeah, jesus than we do statement yeah no it's the same i mean i'll 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 sink or swim on that statement and i and it's controversial and i um i don't mind getting criticized at all for the show and i don't mind being called a blasphemer i don't like it when my friends are and um i've made it very clear that um, if I go down, if I go down, I'm going down swinging, protecting my friends and my, my brothers and sisters. And so I don't deny we have a lot of theological differences, but we. we so when you say friends, he's talking about the Mormons. 
Okay. The same Jesus. Let's just start with the, the, the central question. Is it true that I said, um, which is what you've seen in some headlines or seen in some, some, uh, some titles of videos, Dallas Jenkins says, quote, and then it'll say Mormons or LDS, whatever term that they want to use, Mormons and evangelicals love the same Jesus or LDS are Christians. Is it true that I said that? And the answer is no, um, I did not. Uh, I'll just say, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a ride. I, and it, it all came out of my conversation with you. I said that you, um, that, that many LDS folks and I uh, love the same Jesus. Uh, I still believe that. <laughs> um, it's gotten me in a lot of trouble, but I still believe that. And I'm not, I, I have a bit of a superpower in that I don't really care if, <laughs> if, if, if something that I say that I a superpower passionately believe is, is uh, criticized. Perhaps there's no, but that was terrible. What in the world? The fact that he lied about something. I want to say small, but it's not small, but he lied about something so great and important, right? Like, what? Like, I don't see his title, like, the false prophet. Like, he really does sound like a false prophet. I don't really watch his interviews. This is just like, whoa. <laughs> be better than an ex-Mormon, an ex-LDS, to talk about the issues of the chosen partnering with those who are in the Mormon church currently for financial and executive mm. producer roles. In this next clip, you're going to see and hear from a YouTube channel that we recommend called The Counterfeit Chosen. I've got a link in the description below. And the woman who's narrating this is herself a former Mormon. And she can see wow. The Mormon fingerprints in the chosen script, just like I can see the New Age deception where a lot of professing Christians can't because I came out of the New Age. And so take a look at this clip from season four of The Chosen to understand how the Mormon theology is based on feelings and not upon comparing everything to scripture as true Christianity is. In these next clips from season four, episode four, the Mormon fingerprints are here again. You remember when it was just the three of us? Do you ever miss those days? Well, I would say we did get to spend more time with you. To wish that others would not get this gift by joining us also. Don't be selfish. Let no one underestimate your wisdom, little James. Am I to say, but it doesn't seem so much like wisdom to me as much as a feeling <laughs> in my gut. Hmm. A good feeling? I can't describe it. Try. For most Christians, this dialogue would have gone right over our heads. But having been a Mormon, now I'm an ex-Mormon, these key phrases, Jesus saying to James, let no one underestimate your wisdom. This is where Joseph Smith read James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And Joseph Smith went into the grove and prayed about which church to join. So for the Mormon mind, this triggers Joseph Smith's first vision, where God the Father and God the Son show up in the grove and impart this wisdom, that all the Christian churches are wrong, all their creeds are an abomination, and all their ministers are corrupt. Another trigger is where James says, a feeling in my gut, and Jesus asks, a good feeling? This is pure Mormonism. Mormons are taught that a good feeling, a burning in your bosom, is the Holy Ghost, testifying to the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon, and a bad feeling is of the devil, and sometimes called the spirit of contention. Biblical Christianity and the Word of God knows nothing about a faith 
based upon our feelings. In fact, just the opposite. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14 verse 12. Mormon doctrine has subtly been in every season of the chosen. The Bible is oh, wow. very clear that false prophets are conjuring up images of their own mind. They are whitewashing the truth for what people want to hear. And listen to Dallas Jenkins complain that when he watches any biblically accurate portrayal of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he becomes bored, the what the which is tragic. We need to pray for him. So it came as a result of me wanting to, like, I've been like, how come every time I've watched Jesus projects, and I love Jesus, and I've read the Bible many times, and I'm, I've studied scriptures all my life, why don't I love Jesus as much when I watch when I watch him on screen, like he seems boring. He seems like not very the, the, not, not the kind of guy who would engender uh, thousands of people to follow him around. Um, so the show is a bit of a response to that. And the reaction that we're getting from people when they watch it is over and over and over again every day. This is the Jesus that I feel like I knew but have never seen, or this is who I wanted or th thought Jesus was hoped that he was but but haven't always seen that portrayed before mm. and that's that's for a reason it's coming from someone in myself who believes this deeply so the fact that dallas jenkins seems to be saying in that podcast that uh, a a video that's just the bible verses that that it doesn't move him so he's going to the emotionalism the chosen is in many ways, like a, I don't, I don't want to be what I've seen before, particularly in Jesus portrayals. I mean, how many Jesus movies and miniseries have you seen as a believer in Jesus, Glenn, going, gosh, that's not a Jesus I would ever follow. He's boring. Right. Um, but when you... <laughs> that right. Man, that's crazy. What do you mean Jesus was boring? He was raising people from the dead. In the world. <laughs> Did you even show that in the show? This guy, their Jesus, is like, like you said, like a new age Jesus. Like what in the world? It is definitely a washable show. I give you that. He did exactly what he did. What he said he was going to do. Just make a great washable show. And he did. But it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. <laughs> of, the, of the Bible. And in fact, he said that. He said that Jesus was boring. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Your show is boring. Where's all the miracles I, that Jesus did? <laughs> you, you, got, you got no race on the dead. No healing. I mean, you, got, you have a lot of healings in the show. But, you know. You don't got the baptism. <laughs> well, apparently they did that because of Mormonism too. You don't got God speaking from the sky. Yo, know, if he did an actual biblical um, show, it would have been amazing. It would have been a hundred times better than it is now. It wouldn't be boring. The fact he even said that, you just know that like, he's... He and all those who like super fans of that show are not saved. They don't even know Jesus Christ. They need help have your eyes open and you're saved you you fall in love with the word of god and and it's a joy to read and listen to mm. audios i don't know why they hit heart hit home but she said you fall for the word of god and it ought to me think of like race like a lot of people are saying oh you know jesus was black it was like yes okay but Listen to his words, what he said, follow it. You don't follow the color. I mean, God himself isn't even human. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have a body like us. If we even see him, we will die. That's why we've never seen the Father. But Jesus Christ is God. He's this, like, this memory of God. The Bible said that the Lord is God's memorial. So. Yeah, 
When you get deep into like Christianity stuff, it's just it's crazy to see how everything's inverted. I can't really trust anyone. <laughs> Because they're all happy. It was like all love and all this stuff. It was like, they're not teaching you about Jesus Christ. They're not teaching you the truth. They're teaching you what the devil wants you to know. That is purely the scripture and not an addition to the scripture. Yeah, 100%. And yeah, right now, I, like I'm going through, uh, you know, Second Samuel is my son. And, you know, we learned so much. You know, he's eight years old right now. And yeah, I love going to the Bible with him. It's amazing. And it's like you said, people just want that emotion. They want all that. Um, and, and the Bible talks so much about that. You know, in, Je in Jeremiah 17, 9. A false prophet presumptuously claims that the words that he received were from God, as Dallas Jenkins claims that God told him a colloquial, casual, even it's, it's like a cuss word to me. This, I was grown up not to talk this way, that he was told this by God. And this is another way of us knowing this is a false prophecy. God would not encourage someone to make a product that portrays a false Christ. This just wouldn't happen. I was in Israel a few years ago when I was um, doing research for the show. This is before we had even written a script. And I was in Magdala, and I felt that God was laying on my heart that in, in several years, the chosen was going to be what people thought of when they pictured the disciples, like when they pictured Jesus's people, the people who were around Jesus. Because up till that point, there's been movies and miniseries about Jesus, but like you don't have anything in your mind specifically about Simon Peter or Mary Magdalene. Like there's mm -hmm. no visual in your mind. And I felt like God was saying like, this is going to be the definitive portrayal of my people. And this is what people are going to think of around the world when they think of my people and I'm not going to let you screw it up. <laughs> but I was in Magdala in Israel when I was doing my, the, my mm. first trip to Israel and it was a research trip. And I was at this synagogue in Magdala that has been unearthed just in the last yeah. 20 years. Sure. I felt very strongly on my heart that in several years, this is before the chosen existed. Um, I was just researching for it. I said in several years, your show is what will be in people's heads when they picture my followers. Mm. Wow. wow. And I'm not going to, and I'm not going to let you screw it up. And <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. Cause that was my point too. Like where in the Bible, you know, I, I don't believe I've ever, you know, when reading the Bible, I don't think I've ever encountered, you know, God saying, don't, you know, don't screw this up. <laughs> Another characteristic that the Bible gives us warning about false prophets is that they plagiarize. Let's go to mm. Jeremiah 2330, where God condemns, False prophets who steal from one another plagiarize, in other words. And that plagiarism are words that they're attributing falsely to God. Mm. In this next section, we'll take a look at Dallas Jenkins, his father's words, his former pastor's words, and even himself from his failed movie, The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. And so... You know, this is Dallas's portrayal of what happened to him. You know, uh, God speaking to him, I'm not going to let you screw this up. Now, Warren and I were talking how he thinks, and I kind of believe him, um, that he was, you know, you know, Dallas was at a moment where he was low. Like, you know, resurrection of Gavin Stone, you know, that flopped. And I think it might have put Dallas in a very low spot where he was tempted, just as Jesus Christ was tempted in, you know, in the wilderness by Satan. You know, I'll give you the world. I'll, it'll, it'll be the, you know, definitive portrayal, uh, you know, for my people. Mm. And so uh, that's Warren's point. I want to emphasize that and give him Definitely credit for it. Yeah. But the resurrection of Gavin Stone, literally, I think like five minutes in, it's crazy. So Dallas Jenkins wrote this. This is the one that flopped. But now think of this. So I'm not going to let you screw it up. That's what Dallas claims that he had heard from God. And that was, uh, you know, that was uh, a little after the resurrection of Gavin Stone was released. So let's see a clip from the resurrection of Gavin Stone and think to ourselves, what does this have to do with, I'm not going to let you screw it up. You're going to need a place to stay. For jail. Okay, fine. Church. Be on time, be respectful. You listening? 
don't screw this up. So don't screw this up. This is the kind of verbiage that we just heard from Dallas Jenkins. So where is Dallas Jenkins getting all these things from? <laughs> because it's not the real Jesus. As much as they want to argue it's the authentic Jesus, it's the authentic false Jesus. So um, this is basically for all the Chosen fans out there. Um, this will really interest you. Um, so I want to you know, present you with who Dallas Jenkins is and who you know who he quotes and just all these things it chosen fans are really gonna understand this like dorian and i we we know a few you know of the taglines of the chosen you know come and see or get used to different kind of thing um soon by jerry jenkins dal Jenkins' dad soon is a thing that's in um a lot of chosen episodes and even um in fan groups mm. you know they're they ask oh when season four coming out soon and that's just yeah. yeah it's what they say a whole bunch of you know and uh jonathan rumi who plays jesus is always you know saying oh there's that word again soon and so it's it's, it's you know running joke and so we're gonna see just what kind of things are popping up where dallas has gained his ideas from as you mentioned in the beginning of the episode you know, who, you know what Dallas Jenkins is saying. So this is a book um, by James McDowell, which is uh, what used to be Dallas Jenkins' pastor. So you see authentic here. Um, you know what we think of when we, as a chosen fan, you know, <laughs> what is a chosen fan going to think of when you see authentic, authentic yeah. Jesus? Yeah, that's what they always say, even though it's not. Right. So ex-pastor James McDonald is what? Dallas Jenkins' ex-pastor. So the so what do you see the influence of James McDonald on Dallas Jenkins? Kind of the the verbiage that he's using. Yeah, definitely that. Um, as we'll see, I mean, there's more to show you guys. I, oh yeah, and Warren Smith actually helped with this, so I, I do want to kind of um, give him some credit too. Warren B. Smith is a great researcher. Yeah, he is. Okay, here we go. This is James McDonald. He has a video himself called Authentic Jesus. <laughs> what the world? And that's, that's a tagline that you often hear with people associated with The Chosen. Yep. And in this one, you don't even got to you know, dig into. Like, it's, it's, it's right there, Authentic Jesus. Hmm. Interesting. And then oh, think, oh. think differently. Oh. Wait a minute. Let me get this on the screen. Wow. That's what um, Dallas Jenkins' T-shirt always says, get used to different. Yep. And look at this, his pastor, well, his ex-pastor, because he's disgraced, he's not a pastor anymore, James okay. McDonald's book, Think Differently, Nothing is Different Until You Think Differently, Bible Study. Wow. And Chosen fans, what, what, what are you thinking here? Get used to different. Yeah. Like the, Dallas is not original. He's not. He... he he takes this stuff and he doesn't credit people. He's getting all this stuff from James McDonald, his dad. He's getting it from his own movie before. I wouldn't even think of that. Like the things you say as something as him taking things from other people. I just thought that was something he says. <laughs> like this should be so eye-opening to Chosen fans that we're seeing all these coincidences. Him echoing what he heard from his dad, what he heard from his ex-pastor, James McDonald, and then even recycling what he put in his own movie. So now this is where we kind of like gear towards, since we have all this, all this information, like what's, what's really happening? Like what's, what's the game plan? So yeah, now that we've seen all these things, you know, chosen fans, I, I pray that you're convicted by this. I hope you're understanding and seeing that this, this is all orchestrated and by who, you know what I mean? Like, please ask those questions. And mm -hmm. so Dallas Jenkins, you know, took the chosen, you know, we see all the Mormon connections. He took the chosen, uh, they used the Mormon temple, um, you know, the Jerusalem set in, you know, Goshen, uh, Utah. And it was unprecedented. That was the word. And even people are like, how did you, how did Dallas do that? Like it was so unprecedented that they were able to use that set, the Mormon set, and people are asking Dallas, how did you do that? All right, so at the time of filming, it's, uh, well, at least for you, March 14th, <laughs> um, 
And right now, like literally today, there's an interfaith academic conference about the chosen taking place at BYU. Um, and Brad Palo, president, Mormon of the chosen, is one of the keynote speakers to this. It's actually his alma mater, I guess. Um, and so, you know, this interfaith, this, it, 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 I, I'm speechless, honestly. Like, Doreen and I, we knew this was coming. Like, it, it's just right in our faces. It's interfaith, it's ecumenical, and um, it, it's even being held, I think, in, I think it's called a Joseph Smith building or something like that. And so it's just so in your face. Yeah. Yeah, this is, it's sad because we definitely are called to unity with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're Jesus, the, the Bible tells us to be unified, um, but it also tells us to call out false gospels. And and uh, in Galatians, it even is very clear that if anyone are, is to teach a gospel other than the one that's presented in the Bible, let him be a curse or anathema. So we're not doing this to be mean. Um, we, we appreciate the whole love, love, love sentiment, but what we want to do is we want to share the gospel with the Mormons, not try to build some imaginary bridge that can't happen because it's, it's, it's not a level that can be uh, bridged. It's different, different Jesus. Another mark of false teachers is that they tend to flock with other false teachers. The false teachers often speak at the same conferences mm, on the same stages. True. In this next clip, you'll hear Dallas Jenkins say that he's fine, that a Hollywood production company that produces horror films, horror films, that they were attracted to his script, to Dallas Jenkins' script. The other chosen being in production of any sorts, being famous, especially being mentioned in the radio and stuff, automatically made me go red flag. I did watch the first two seasons, so... But even before I watched it, I was just like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't really sound right, but I give it a try. I know that I'm a little more knowledgeable in the word than I was before. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> but I didn't notice that. Especially things with the Mormon, it's like, I wouldn't notice those things. And that they wanted to produce or finance his movie. Shawn Michaels is in the film, right. and it's produced by WWE Studios. Yeah. How did that happen? Right. Well, they just love the script, and so they have a relationship with Blumhouse, again, known primarily for horror films like Paranormal Activity and Sinister and Insidious and all this. And they just love the film. They really love the script, and they loved what we were trying to do. I think they saw the synergy that we bring to the table. Our church is quite large and has church plants and a ministry around the around the world walking the word television walking the word radio and we also know that dallas jenkins also partners with others who share a false gospel such as the executive producer of the chosen being a mormon now the mormons if you're not up on this they believe in a different jesus than we do they actually believe that jesus is lucifer's brother and a whole other host of things that even a lay person who's vaguely familiar with Christianity wouldn't believe. So it's a different Jesus, a different gospel coming from the Mormon church. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And for those who are following a false Christ, Jesus said, away from me, you workers of lawlessness, I never knew you. Dallas Jenkins also, with the Hollow app, which is a Roman Catholic app, that blasphemously calls people to pray to Mother Mary, oh, even though the Bible never says we are to pray to Mary. The Bible says that there's only one mediator between man and the Father God, and that is Jesus Christ. So partnering financially with Mormon... Us wanting something more shows a little bit of how human character is like we can't just let everything to be simple just let god take care of it they're like nah i'd rather go pray to this person over here <laughs> rather go do this rather do this that god said honey i already did it for you 
<laughs> and we just like that. <laughs> like they're so wicked, and we don't even understand it. We we have to start gaining understanding and wisdom. I know some people they're just they don't care about anything. There's nothing you can do about them. But if you're like someone who wants to know things, want to learn, wants to have understanding, wants a better world, then seek understanding, seek wisdom. This knowledge, the truth will set you free. It says that there's only one mediator between man and the Father God, and that is Jesus Christ. So partnering financially with Mormonism, Roman Catholicism, and even this satanic horror movie film production company, this is partnering with false teachers, false gospel, and a false Jesus. And if all of that wasn't bad enough, Disney is announcing that they are going to show episodes of The Chosen. Oh. Hulu is owned by Disney and The Chosen is being shown on Hulu Disney bundles. Now, with Disney's background of glorifying witchcraft and sorcery, which are condemned in the Bible, you would think, well, that's great. They're going to finally have Jesus on Disney. But no, they're not. They're going to have the fake so-called authentic Jesus. So this is terrible news. This is more deception for Disney that's already leading people in deception by claiming there's such a thing as a good witch versus a bad witch, mm -hmm. which there isn't. The Bible condemns witchcraft resoundingly. There's no such thing as a Christian witch or a good witch or a white witch. It's all witchcraft and sorcery. And in Revelation 21 and 22, it says that those who are sorcerers or idolaters will be cast into the lake of fire, hell, for eternity and will not be allowed in the new heaven. So this is a salvific issue and another example of partnering with false teachers, false partners. Let's compare what the Bible says to what Dallas Jenkins' wife, Amanda Jenkins, claims that God told her that he does impossible math. This is not a phrase anywhere near in the Bible. Again, Jeremiah 14, 14 says that people who are false prophets have delusions of their own minds. Amanda claims in this clip oh, wow, that she crazy. heard from God as sort of a reassurance that her husband's failed movie, The Resurrection of Gavin Stone, would turn into some sort of box office hit. And of course it didn't. Another mark of a false prophecy. Take a listen. Uh, God really spoke very clearly to Amanda and uh, gave her the story of the feeding of the 5,000 along with the phrase, I do impossible math. Just kind of was like pressing it. I, I clean when I'm upset. <laughs> so I was just busy mopping. And um, he just kept on pressing that story on my heart with that phrase that made no sense at the time. Um, okay, so the story of God telling you, I do impossible math, I want you to share yeah. with our... Um, with our listeners today, because I think that is so powerful. How did you hear that? What was it about? Um, we had had this total box office fail. I watched my husband uh, get decimated. It makes me cry a little bit. And so I went to clean after we cried for a little bit. I just went to clean. And I just was like, I mean, it was just the feeding of the, the 5,000 story that I was like on my head. Like, why would that be on my head? Just on my mind, just out of the blue pressing, pressing that story. And I just remember where I was in the house at the moment um, where that he said that phrase. And it was so clearly not of my thinking because I was really operating in the flesh, you know, and sadness and worry of course. And, yeah. um, and brokenheartedness and all of those things. And so I just went back to Dallas and I said, I don't know what this is, but go read this story mm -hmm. and this phrase. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you do the thing that we all do where you take the little bit of information that God has given you and you go, it must mean this. We, yeah. we draw conclusions about the little information that we had. So we thought um, the numbers would turn around. It, this happened on a Friday. We thought the numbers will turn around and it'll be this big miracle. And isn't that the right God story for all of these non-Christians we're working with and all this? This would be a great story. And uh, nothing turned around and there was no miracle that weekend. 
Dallas Jenkins is always doing, you know, eisegesis with all this stuff. Like, you know, he says, oh, you know, I, I got to do my, you know, five loaves and two fish. And I, you know, him and Amanda always talk about the Red Sea moments and just, they, they install themselves in the scripture and it's, mm. it's not enough, I guess. Yeah. Scary stuff. So how does this affect someone who's immersed in the show, who's doing what they recommend binging on the show? Yeah. I mean, it, warp sense of, you know, reality. Um, even Dallas Jenkins himself, um, he, when he reads the word now, he, he's admitted that he sees the characters that he created in his mind. And wow. we, I mean, how many times have we seen, um, you know, whether it be, you know, friends on Facebook or, you know, in the Facebook group, um, how many people have, you know, just visualized Jesus or, you know, listen, you know, they, when they read the Bible, they, now hear their voices of, you know, Matthew or, you know, Jesus or Nicodemus or whoever, you know, people who have literally a couple of, you know, verses, you know, Matthew and Nicodemus, there's maybe 10 verses, you know, compiled with both of them in scripture. False prophets give words from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord, according to Jeremiah 23, 16. Like in second Peter two eighteen, we see that false prophets are exhibited by their arrogance. So let's take a look at arrogance on the part of Dallas Jenkins here. Here's someone confronting Dallas Jenkins on Facebook saying, you present a false gospel and a false Christ to millions of people. How do you sleep at night? And Dallas Jenkins says, I don't, too busy. It's over a hundred million people actually, and they're eager, arrogance. Here's someone saying, Dallas seems too obsessed with videos and pictures of himself. More gospel messaging, please. And Dallas arrogantly replies, I think if you're going to a filmmaker's social media pages for more gospel messaging, you might need a better church. And most shockingly, here's Dallas Jenkins so at a awards ceremony. <laughs> She's so, like, if you want more messages of God to go to a church. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Oh, okay. So they're like, so he's saying that like, she get all that from your church, not from him. Okay. Okay. Ceremony. And he's got the actors who play James and John on The Chosen on either side of him. And look at what Dallas says. This is shocking. He says, they play James and John. They're trying to get on my right and my left hand. <laughs> this is Dallas quoting Jesus. This is blasphemy. And in the new age, I was convinced that I was following Jesus. I was convinced I was speaking to Jesus, hearing from Jesus, and even getting messages from him that I don't believe this man actually believes that he's hearing Jesus Christ. I think he knows for certain without a doubt that he's talking to the devil. He's just misleading people. He's playing his role. That's and fortunately put in my new age teaching materials. We know that the authentic Jesus, the real authentic Jesus, not the spirit guide, not the made up imaginary Jesus, but the real authentic Jesus was sinless. In his earthly ministry, he came to earth, fully God and fully man. And he took the punishment that we deserve because all of us have sinned. And then he died and he was buried in a tomb as prophesied. And three days later, he, he rose from the dead physically. People touched him. They ate with him. They talked with him. They saw him. Hundreds of people. And then he ascended to the right hand of our Father God, and he will return to judge us all. And as 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 4, summarizes the gospel, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I like how she put the gospel in here. She left the gospel. That's the good news. That's the good news. Deuteronomy 13, 2 through 5 is very clear. 
that if it's a true prophecy, if it's really a message from God, then it must conform to what God has previously said. It must not contradict what God has said. When you say that you've heard from God and it's not God, you are taking the Lord's name in vain. The commandment is, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. One of the key characteristics of a false prophet is that they claim to speak for God or from God, that they received a message from God when they didn't. And how do we know that they didn't? We compare it to the Bible. We test the spirits. The Chosen presents a false Christ and twists scripture. Even Dallas Jenkins has admitted that. He says that he gets bored when there's presentations of Jesus that are literal, that are by the Bible. He says it's boring to him. So he takes this artistic liberty and laughs at it arrogantly. In Ezekiel 13, we see that the false prophets also gave the people what they wanted to hear. They whitewashed everything. They made it to be something that would tickle people's ears, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, that people will want in the end times. They won't want the truth. They will want something that's feel good, that's all about the feels and emotionalism. And that's exactly what's happening with the chosen. When I was a false teacher in the new age, and I was thinking I got messages from God and God's angels and even from Jesus, I was amazed at how quickly my work became popular. Now it became popular because people want their itching ears tickled, but also because the enemy, he's, he's like a sugar daddy who makes things popular that fit his agenda. And I believe that's what we're seeing with the rapid growth of the chosen. That's just shocking and so worrisome. And again, we need to pray for everyone involved that they would have the scales taken off their eyes and have a hunger for God's word so that they could see the truth about Jesus, which is a million times better than anything that we see on these fictional TV shows that he's saying that it's the authentic Jesus and he's proclaiming we need to get used to different. Those are toxic, twisted lies from the pit of hell. And we need to be so cautious 100% during and just to wrap this up um, what do you think about a person who would advise you to watch the chosen you know as if the Bible didn't exist well, Dallas Jenkins uh, commented on YouTube under this and you know before someone says oh that's not the real Dallas Jenkins um, now let's be honest the host of that put this up on their video saying that they communicate with Dallas Jenkins so just if you, if you please verify it I mean I, I would love you guys to be a brain and you know check this out. Um, but Dallas Jenkins says, agreed. And just to clarify even further, I believe it is important to watch The Chosen as though the Bible didn't exist. Mic drop. Right. Who, who would say something like that? I know who would say something like that. The one who does not want the Bible, does not want us to read the Bible. And this is our plea. This is our plea to Chosen fans who might be viewing this. Or people who know family and friends, you know, please share this video with them because I think this is very concrete evidence to show, you know, you know who's who's involved with all this. You know, where's again? Let's pose the question: Where's Dallas Jenkins getting this from? Mm. He's getting it from people like James McDonald, you know, his, his father, his old movies, and worst of all, it's plausible. It automatic rain. Yep, sure seems familiar from my old past before I was saved. And I appreciate I appreciate you like I you know, it's good teamwork for you and I because you know I you know research this stuff, but I I forward this stuff to you because I didn't know I I, I just you know I I, I don't want to you know have a lack of evidence and say oh you know I'm just you know grass bath you know straws here but. You have the background, Doreen, and that's why I forward all this information to you. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just going to go to the test of the spirits in the Apostle John's first letter, uh, chapter 4, in which he said that um, this, the spirit, I'm paraphrasing it, that we can tell if this is the authentic spirit of God if this spirit confesses Jesus biblically. 
Yep, that's very well said. And I mean, just look at all the you know interface. They're unequally yoked. That that's bottom line. They're unequally yoked. Jude nineteen says it's the false teachers. Yeah, who it, ca- cause divisions. Right. It's so opposite. And who who operates in opposites? Yep, the counterfeit. Mm-hmm. And and part of that is is appreciating God's word. And when you say something like pretend like the Bible doesn't even exist, while at the same time claiming that you are portraying the authentic Jesus and the definitive portrayal of God's people, you, you're you talking out of both sides of your mouth in a very dangerous way, very dangerous. And, and this is a pe- someone leading people to slaughter. I mean, I just pray that the Holy Spirit would convict those who are saved and um, I was even convicted by the Holy Spirit of being a false prophetess before I was saved in it. And, and the Holy Spirit pointed me to Bible study, which ultimately is what God used to save me um, by showing me a mirror of my sins in the new age. Oh, this is just so, so concerning that he's saying, I, you know, act as if the Bible doesn't exist. I, I was saying that in the new age. I would tell people the Bible was corrupted by Constantine and the Roman Catholic Church which historically is impossible because the Bible was a closed canon well before Constantine and the Roman Catholic Church came about. Even though- There is some truth into that story. A little bit of truth. Which I'm not really going to talk about on this. But we can talk about it in another video. So people will argue, well, Peter was the first pope. It doesn't say that in the Bible, and nowhere in the book of Romans does Paul even mention Peter. If he was the Pope at that time, he would have given a greeting greeting in that letter to Peter. So, yeah, And speaking of which, you, know, you mentioned 1 John 4, you know, in chapter 1, you know, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. And the, and the final one is even, you know, more important, um, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Yeah, I mean, look what we're yeah. dealing with. Right, and in that same passage, it says that if it's a false spirit, it's the spirit of the Antichrist, which we know is coming and which many are already in the world. Yep. If you're not yeah. for Christ, you're Antichrist, and we know that that's part of the end times. Yep, I think this is huge priming for it. I mean, this is huge primer for it. Yep. Yeah, the Antichrist will be someone who seems to be standing for peace and world solutions and yet will be um, is insisting that we worship him or we will not be able to buy or eat or sell any wares. That part. Tell about worship. Who do you worship? And that's where the market of peace comes in. It's a form of worship. Interface going on today scary stuff be careful you guys and i know you might get mad at shane and i for pointing all this out but this is between you and god this is not about me or shane this is about you and god so go read your bibles go pray and uh ask the holy spirit to to tell you the truth and to guide you and i know know. that you you're taking one for the team by watching all the episodes for your research which i just really appreciate also, Dallas has said that he feels no guilt with adding stuff. Oh, like I, 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 was, yeah, I was listening to a video today, and he said he feels no guilt. Yeah, scary. Well, we'll have to pray for him for sure. If I can be saved, anybody can be saved. 100%. That she definitely taught me that. Yeah. So, yeah, this is Daryl Eves, again, Mormon executive producer of The Chosen. Um, and this is where he says some interesting things along the lines of what Dallas Strickland said earlier. But he says, like, downloads and guidance, so. Mm, scary. We're always just trying to figure out how do we make it, how do we get it accessible to more people? Sure. How do we get more people to watch? Yep. And I was actually in Singapore, and I was just praying to God. I'm like, if we're ever going to get to a billion people, we got to do things differently. And it's just not working the, the rate that we need to. And I'm always just looking for guidance. And right then and there, I kid you not, my wife and I were, were crossing the street and we noticed a family of five was watching a movie on their, their Android device. And I go, that's it. that's it. We need an app. Yeah. We need an app. We need to be able to go right there. It, like, it was kind of like, kind of download. 
um, from from up, up above and I just knew that that's where the direction needed to go yeah. so I just went back to the team and they're like what are you talking about we don't need an app yeah. you know we need to, we just got to figure this out and so it was no we need an app and and ultimately what what really got us the visibility was was we decided it's so hard for people to buy um, why don't we just you know live stream it on YouTube and do it for free yeah yeah, yeah. And we decided to do eight days that we were just going to open it up and, and be for free. And Dell says, we'll see how this goes. And the first night, I kid you not, um, we did four times more money than we've ever made by making it free. Really? And then the next day, and uh, most of these people here, and the next day, we quintupled that 4X. Wow. And we knew right then and there. I got this late night uh, voice note from Dallas. He goes, looks like God wants to make this chosen for free. I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Wow. So that was interesting, sort of troubling. Um, Daryl Eves, obviously a, a shrewd businessman. Um, I've talked with um, our brother in Christ, Ed Romine, who's a got a PhD. He's very smart. And he is based in Utah, where he does a lot of uh, evangelizing to Mormons, and he was telling me that a high number of the multi-level marketing companies, MLMs, are owned and run by Mormons. He said that they just are renowned business people. And so Daryl Eves talking about his his business ideas, and, and his, he's not even ashamed to talk about his goals. You know, he's just blatant. We're, we want a billion people. And I just weep. I know you do too, because that's such a lost opportunity to actually show the authentic Jesus, to actually share the gospel. Don't settle for less than the real Jesus, because he's the only one who can save our souls. The false Jesuses, even if they are called authentic, or like in the New Age, we called them ascended masters. And even if those fake Jesuses seem to be a little more palatable to the flesh, because they seem easygoing, you can do whatever you want. They seem more human. Those yeah. cannot save our souls. And it is a narrow path to heaven and a broad path to hell. Shane, thank you so much for, as always, doing this incredible amount of research and putting yourself out with your group, The Chosen Do Not Be Deceived. Please, if you are interested in this topic, do join the group. You'll find a lot of resources and support there. Cool. Thank you so much, Doreen. I appreciate yeah, you having me here. Thank you.